Hospital workers of Reddit, what's the creepiest thing you have ever seen, posted one day ago. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm an ICU nurse. I had a patient who was declared brainstem dead. The family did not want him to become an organ donor, so we withdrew treatment. I switched off the ventilator, pumps, etc., and extubated the patient. A few moments later, the patient displayed Lazarus sign, which is a reflex that causes the patient to raise their arms in the air. I was by no means new to the role, but this really scared me as I had never even heard of it, let alone witnesses it. I don't know why, but seeing patients at the ER who have just committed or attempted suicide by hanging always gives me a frightening sensation. I don't have a single event. But from working nights in the operating room of a level 1 trauma center, you run into many awful things, including the worst of society. But something that sticks with you is seeing a severely injured person in complete shock. Not like, wow, my arm is off, but like body shock. They're barely aware of the world around them, eerily calm, pale, sluggish, not at all bothered by the bustling room around them. I remember one person who had a ruptured aortic aneurysm and, Due to a communication breakdown, we had incised before the patient was asleep. Surgeons get tunnel vision in moments like that, and the patient was like, hey, that hurts. Very chill, almost bored. It was wild. I worked in the kitchen, so I was the lowly peon delivering food trays. Delivered to one guy who had a horrendously infected foot. Most of the toes were necrotic and black, and the rest of the foot wasn't doing much better. I wouldn't be surprised if he was waiting on amputation. His dietary requirements were diabetic, so it was likely. The room smelled awful. Anyway, these rooms are small, with typically two beds in them. Because of the smell from his infection, the other bed is empty. I still have to squeeze by the foot of his bed, and as I'm paying attention to the tray so I don't knock it into equipment, I accidentally brush my leg against his infected foot that he has sticking out of the covers and hanging off the bed. His big toenail comes off onto my leg. It's just stuck to my leg. We look at each other in horror. I clear my throat, ask my usual questions, clear and adjust his table, give him his tray and wish him a good day. I leave calmly and then run to the nurse's station and ask for help getting this dude's entire necrotic toenail with bonus flesh off my fucking leg. The nurse who got it off soaked that portion of my pant leg in some disinfected liquid that smelled like it could take the paint off a car. Dead mouse in patient's shoe. She had neuropathy in her feet and couldn't feel anything, including weeping ulcers covering both feet, gangrenous toes, and apparently a less than recently deceased mouse. A few small amputations, two months of IV antibiotics, and many wound dressings later, all was well again. There should be a foot watchers group for diabetics to check each other's feet using the buddy system. Neuropathy is serious business. I was walking into the hospital cafeteria and see a guy crouched down behind a trash can wearing a gown and holding his IV port. He was an interesting looking fellow, sorta of trashy looking and wearing only the gown, so he was quite noticeable. I see security running in and watch him crouch down lower. Officer Man Pants, a female security guard I've affectionately nicknamed, finally spots him and yells at him to come with her. He jumps up, screams, not you again, bitch then pelts her in the face with an open carton of milk. Chase ensues. I go back to getting my breakfast. Turns out, he was trying to leave with his IV port attached so that it gave him easier access to shooting up. Pretty common practice of drug-addicted individuals in a hospital setting. We always let these people go AMA against medical advice, but we let them know we must remove the port per hospital policy. It rarely works in our favor. I got a fast bleep i.e. drop everything you're doing and attend this emergency please one night to a side room on the ward to find no patient in the bed. I was just about to leave the room and go back out to the nurse's station where there had been a bit of a hubbub when I dashed past the first time when something caught my eye. Looked up to see a face with wide, slightly wild psych eyes peering down at me from a gap in the ceiling tiles. She was a lady waiting for a bed in the psych hospital who'd clearly thought the ceiling was the best place to hide from the people trying to poison her. Honestly, can't think of another occasion that I've been quite so terrified. Worst thing was that I had to walk, well, dash, back out underneath her to get help from the nurses and security to get her down. You guys need a little levity after reading all these. 
worked the ER as an Air Force medic, Eglin Air Force Base Hospital, Fort Walton Beach, Florida, resort area, pristine white beaches, sport fishing. Took a body down to the morgue with another medic and ship supervisor. He had the drawer assignment and paperwork responsibility. We pulled open the drawer and there was a monstrously large sailfish that could hardly fit without its body curved and sail pushed down. We stood there in surprise. Um, procedure? No idea. The NCO said, it would be a very good idea not to remember this. I'll deal with it in the morning. Let's see, how about this drawer? Later, it was rumored it belonged to one of the senior surgeons. After working as an RN for a few years, I learned to always trust a patient that expresses fears or a belief that they are going to die. That feeling of doom usually precedes some sort of life-threatening emergency. Sudden cardiac arrest or a pulmonary embolism are usually the fatal culprits behind an ominous feeling of imminent death. RN here. When I was a student nurse, I arrived at my first ever clinical placement on my very first day, first thing in the morning, and the nurses had me help them put a guy in a body bag who died overnight. Not the most fun introduction to my nursing career, but it sure prepared me for all the shit I'd have to see and do. RN here. Not exactly creepy so much as an oh shit moment. I went to check on my patient for some routine obs and they proceed to calmly tell me I can't pick up my phone and then they lifted up one of their hands with the other and let it limply drop down to demonstrate that it was dead. I immediately called a code stroke and they were rushed to theater. It was just so disconcerting how nonchalant and unconcerned the patient was about it. I was a supervisor over the admissions department of the emergency room in a very small hospital in a rural area. I had two people call in one night, so I had to go in and work by myself. Around 3 a.m., EMS arrives with a patient that shouldn't have been brought to our hospital. She was DOA. Being in the admissions department meant I had to do all the paperwork when patients came to the hospital. I walked into the room with my clipboard and saw a woman on a stretcher with a dog chain around her neck. She had claw marks all around the chain where it looks like she had tried to get the chain off. EMS stated that in the process of hanging herself, she changed her mind, but it was too late. Gave me chills. I recently had to confirm my first death. It was late at night and I had to deal with quite a few things first that were a higher priority so it had been a while between the person passing away and me getting there. I've seen dead bodies before but this was my first time getting really close to one because if you don't know there are certain things you need to do to confirm a death such as check for pulse and breathing for a decent amount of time which means you are in contact with the deceased for a fair while. I don't like calling it creepy because death is natural and I don't want to feel as if I'm in any way being disrespectful, but it was certainly unnerving because for one, his skin was very cold and that's a really big deal when you're so used to the warmth of living people. Second was that the person was caught in the position of their last breath and I kept sort of hoping that they would complete it. Also, being as it was late at night and I was near the end of shift, I was rather tired and a lot anxious. Out of the corner of my eye, I kept seeing movement I'm still sure he was dead, because I did really check, but it messed with me a little. Not really as exciting as the others, but a patient who was newly diagnosed with cancer decided not to get treatment because she just didn't have another round in her. Shortly after, she was complaining of pain in her leg or foot, which was quickly diagnosed as a blood clot. She refused treatment. We watched her decline for days. Her foot went from hot and red to black. Each shift, I would come in and find her mental status had deteriorated quickly. It was extremely sad, seeing her family come in day after day, begging her to get help and change her mind while watching her die. My wife is transitioning away from working nights at an assisted living facility. She said for about a week after one resident passed on the memory care side, all of the nursing assistants would randomly hear someone with a walker moving around. Walkers make an extremely distinctive noise when one walks with one, except they have sensors everywhere so they know when someone's up and every time nobody was up, and they could not find anybody that was up upon walking around looking for the source of it. She also told me that this job has convinced her that ghosts are real. My Contribution I'm on an on-call victim support team, so I often end up at the hospital at odd hours. This was around 4 a.m. 
I'd just finished doing my thing, and I was sitting in my car in the parking lot collecting myself and writing notes for my report when I see someone out of the corner of my eye. I clearly saw the blue of a hospital gown, but when I looked over, no one was there. I figured I'm just tired and riding out the adrenaline of the call, so I go back to doing my thing. After a few minutes, I once again spot something out of the corner of my eye. This time when I look up, someone is there. Standing on the curb in front of the hospital, I see a man in his mid to late 50s, thin hair up top, no facial hair. He's wearing a hospital gown and holding on to something metal, but from my angle, I couldn't tell if it was an IV pole or a crutch. He wasn't leaning on it. He had this expression on his face of wide-eyed shock with his mouth slightly open, like he was trying to think of something to say, and it totally stalled out. At this point, I start glancing around for staff or something because this man doesn't look like he should be outside alone. His skin is a messed up pale color and he's barefoot. I can't see his feet well with the shadows, but his hand and fingers look bruised. As I'm looking around for staff, our eyes meet, and I know he sees me. I start thinking, okay, this guy can't wander around alone, half naked and unmasked. I have huge chills, but I turn to grab my mask and get out of my car to help guide him back inside. When I look up again, he's gone. I looked all over the parking lot for him, but he was gone. There's no way he could have vanished like that in the split second it took me to grab my mask. I don't know how to explain this without sounding dramatic, but my skin crawled when he looked at me. He looked like a guy who was slowly realizing he'd died and didn't know what to do. I still think about it. I used to work in a Catholic hospital, and on night rounds on the orthopedic floor, I finally asked the nurse why the patient room right off from the elevator was used for storage of extra beds and IV poles. I assumed it may be too noisy and had patient complaints from being by the elevator. The real story is that it was haunted by this woman who was acting very strange, and apparently they had called a priest in to literally see if she was possessed. He said she was and she had accused a nurse of stealing her baby. Patient was 70-ish, and son died as an infant. Turns out, that nurse was pregnant and didn't know it yet. Anyway, she apparently levitated and died a few days later. They had hung a cross outside the wall of the room that was facing the elevators that fell off and broke, and the paper towel automatic dispenser, the one you wave your hand in front of, would constantly spill out paper towels, and the automatic sink would turn on and off randomly so they quit putting patients in that room. I never witnessed it myself, but I also never went into that room after that.